I'm going to stay with the Easter Rising for the next few videos. Um, there is a tendency for people talking about it, if they talk about the figures involved, to always talk about Connolly or Pierce, or even if they talk about the Lesser Lights, they'll talk about Kent or maybe McDermott. But there were other people who were vitally important or who were major figures who receive less attention perhaps than they should. And although they're well-known in Ireland, they're less well-known among Irish people in the Irish diaspora worldwide, and sometimes they're even forgotten in Ireland. Hence, we shall turn to this lady, Dr Kathleen Lynn. Dr Lynn is a really important figure in Irish history, but I feel she doesn't sometimes get the attention she deserves. This is from the Heritage Centre for the Royal College for Physicians of Physicians of Ireland. I guess it's still called the Royal College of Physicians for Ireland. I'm sure uh, you do get people bouncing up and down about that. I think that's even I, as an Irish nationalist, I'm not quite that petty. Um, Dr. Kathleen Lynn. Kathleen Lynn was born in Mayo on the 28th of January 1874, the daughter of Robert Lynn, a Church of Ireland clergyman, and his wife Catherine Wynn. Catherine Lynn studied medicine at Cecilia Street, the Catholic University Medical School, graduating in 1899. Following her graduation, she worked in a number of Dublin hospitals and ran a private practice from her home at Nine Belgrave Road, right in Mines County, Dublin. To be honest, studying to be a female doctor in that era must have been unusually tough, and I imagine she faced quite a bit of prejudice and silliness and and from some male colleagues and probably not just male colleagues i imagine some female um, nurses didn't love it either they would have regarded as a woman as getting above themselves in 1913 at the rest of quest of countess markovich a figure who's also instrumental in the easter rising but gets quite a bit of attention although i will turn to a short biography of her because i have a, per a personal interest in her as a figure she treated helena monolini and that's another figure that's important as well. Molly stayed with Lynn while she recuperated and they used to have long talks and she converted me to the national movement. Lynn became active in the suffragist, labour and nationalist movements. Molyny and Markovic, she supported the workers during the Dublin lockout in 1913. For those not aware of the Dublin lockout, this was a long-running strike in 1913 and a very bitter and horrible strike. Uh, which went on at a considerable length, and I'll try and include a link to it, actually, I think, to give you some background. What was her role in 1916, then? Lynn was a member of the Irish Citizen Army. The Irish Citizen Army has sometimes been characterised as one of the first socialist revolutionary armies or socialist groups running a revolution in Europe. It's a reasonable point of view, I'd say, although they were a very small group, they never really numbered more than a maximum of 200 some people have said 250 but i think that's probably on their best day ever she thought first aid to them and come on the bon um that's the women's auxiliary of the irish volunteers who were also quite instrumental in the the rising and irish independence but often till recent years didn't seem to get the respect they were due either you couldn't have done anything without them in the background um, tending wounds, smuggling stuff, intelligence. They often went out notes as secretary, smuggling out codes and so on. She used a car to run guns into Dublin in the weeks before the rising, even storing some at her own house. It was chief medical officer of the Irish Citizen Army. She was stationed at City Hall, from which post she treated the wounded. The position was recaptured by the British forces of the evening of Easter Monday, and Lynn was arrested and imprisoned in Ship Street and Richmond Barracks, Kilmaine and Mount Day Joyals. Um, for anyone Irish reading that, I don't need to tell you the, what the names Kilmaine and Mount Joy mean. They'll sort of have a resonance for you straight away. She also kept a number of diaries, which are of interest to historians. What are the diaries like? During the first three weeks of imprisonment, Lynn kept a fascinating daily account of events. The account was originally written in blue pencil on scraps of paper. These were later copied into a bound volume, which he continued to use as a diary. Lynn's professional background is clear in her concern about lice, fleas, unsanitary conditions and typhus. She also shows concern for the prison's mental health, stress created by imprisonment and the rumours about the fates of comrades. She also comments on the benefits of taking exercise. 
especially when allowed to talk such a conference. I notice this gives you a link to all of her diaries. Now, I'm not going to read all of them out. That would be a very lengthy thing, but there might be someone watching who'd be interested enough to do it. And what about Lynn later in Irish history? She was deported to England. Unlike other prisoners, she was not in prison in England, but sent to work with a doctor near Bath. I imagine she, given that England was at war, she her training as a doctor was considered too valuable to waste. Lynn returned to Ireland in the summer for a month to nurse her sister was ill. By the end of the war, she was back at home in her rep mines and re-established her practice. Lynn remained active in the nationalist movement. She was elected vice president of the Sinn Féin executive and a TD, the Irish equivalent of an MP, a Tiagda Dala, in 1923, although she didn't take a seat. In 1919, she co-founded St. Alton's Hospital for Infants on Childman Street, providing much needed medical and educational support. Um, there was actually a recent call to have a hospital named after Lynn that didn't succeed, which really rather annoyed me because if any woman in the history of Ireland deserved to have a hospital named after them, it's Dr. Kathleen Lynn. This is Lynn's Wikipedia page, which comments at some length on um, the rumours that she was a lesbian. This is a debated point and caused a lot of argument back in the day. She lived from her uh, in Rat Mines from 1903 with this lady, Madeleine for French Mullen. Oh, these annoying double F names, which fortunately you don't find very much anymore. Um, whether she was or wasn't a lesbian, I don't know. There were people who actually just shared lives together, like as partners or friends in this area who weren't, and I can't comment on it. It's sort of, I don't think it's really important anyway. To me, it's it's her own business. Finally, this is Lynn's um, Kathleen Lynn's grave in Dean's Grange Cemetery in Dublin, where a very large number of people associated with the War of Independence are buried and now reside in their eternal reward. And we have this small bit from, this was University College Dublin. I had a rather nice shot of her with um, a Madeline for French Mullen with children at St. Alton. I'm trying to find lesser known figures from the Easter Rising because he, the 16 main figures are always talked about, but there were loads of figures who clustered around them that the whole thing couldn't have happened about with, and they were also instrumental in the story of modern Ireland. And he deserved their own time and deserved to be remembered at the, 